how we do this, we are the truest, got these fangs super sharp, your shit toothless, cold hearted, yeah we ruthless, all the ghouls in the cut, let's get ghoulish, in the graveyard, acting foolish, finna dance with the devil to no music, cold hearted, yeah we ruthless, all the ghouls in the cut, let's get ghoulish. Hello and welcome to a new episode of Ghoulish. I am Max Booth, and I'm Dead Host, and I am back. It's been many months since we put out a new episode, but that is changing now because I have Julia Rios and Nadia Bilkin on the show today talking about haunted houses to promote the new anthology. Why didn't you just leave? It's being uh, crowdfunded right now. This is the last week that you can pledge to help fund this anthology. I even have a Australia in the book. It's called, Am I the Asshole for Setting My Dad's Trailer on File? It's written as an uh, A-T-A, A-I-T-A, uh, Am I the Asshole, like you would find on Reddit. Um, I'm pretty happy with how this really came out. I'm excited about the anthology. Seemed like a good time to bring the podcast back. Hopefully someone listening might throw a few bucks to it. I'll have a link in the show note. Show notes, even. Once again, the anthology is called Why Didn't You Just Leave? And, yeah, last week to help fund it. Lots of things have happened since my last episode. We now have a bookshop in San Antonio called Ghoulish Books, same name as the press. Um, issue one of the new magazine, Ghoulish Tales, is out now. It's pretty happy with how the magazine came out, Ghoulish Tales. You can buy it any place. I recommend getting it at ghoulishbooks.com. What else? I don't know. We've published some books since then. I've uh, choked on banana bread. That's pretty much it. I've caught you up to speed. Ghoulishbooks.com. Buy Ghoulish Tales. Go on to kickstartle.com. Pledge something to help fund. Why didn't you just leave? And now you can listen to my episode with Julia and Nadia about haunted houses. Yeah, baby. It's the haunted houses episode. Whoa, ho, ho. Well, why didn't you just leave? That's a that's a book. You two have edited it. Is that correct? Am I do I have the right info? Uh, we that's are right. we are in the process of editing it. We we are going to have an open subs call for August first. So uh, we don't know everything that's going to be in it yet. But yes, we're editing it. It's exciting. And that's interesting because I think most like anthologists. They will just edit the anthology before it's even done. Like before they have any of the stories, they will just they know what they want to edit before they even read the stories. So you two will going about it in a kind of unique way. Nah, that's pretty awesome to heal. I, I mean, what do, you, what do they <laughs> edit before they get the story? Like, what are they editing? Is it like they have a set amount of like type of story that they want? Is that kind of thing? No, they just what... they just kind of like guess what type of typos to anticipate and they pre-edit those. It's really exp- I mean, I can't do it that way. That's, but that's I, groundbreaking. Yeah, I'm told like um, what's his name? Uh, John Joseph Adams. And that's that's how that's how he does it. Is that his name? Or did I just screw that up? Yeah, that's, that's his name. name. Ah, what a name! It sounds like like Johnny Appleseed almost. Like he doesn't <laughs> exist. I was gonna say, like, is that a is that an editor or a president? I was like, <laughs> John, well, I don't know what the first John Adams president was, but then the second was John Quincy Adams. So John uh, Joseph yeah. Adams the was an editor. No middle, no middle name. I'm not sure. I don't know, but maybe John Joseph Adams can be the third John it Adams could be John president. Joseph Adams, yeah, he might run. I don't know. It's um, would you vote for him? <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know anything about him. Oh, he's a pretty nice guy. I've yeah, met him before. Nice 
All right. Well, I guess this podcast is now sponsoring the presidential <laughs> run of John Joseph Adams. <laughs> <laughs> he has not paid me any money yet, but hopefully we can get some sweet cash thrown to the podcast. Yeah, like Ghoulish Pod, now known as the John J. Adams Presidential 2024. <laughs> it's the whole reason I came back to podcasting. <laughs> this is this is your your great um, reveal. Yeah, so I'm really happy you two could be involved with this announcement. But to let's we don't have to keep talking about him. We can talk about this really exciting anthology. I was hoping we could begin with you two just kind of talking about well how you two kind of met and became the most exciting editorial editorial duo of 2023 and how this anthology even launched. <laughs> okay, yeah. Nadia, this is your turn. <laughs> it's my it, this is this is my go. Um so yeah so we actually didn't know each other before we started working together on this which is kind of hilarious even though actually we found out that we had met well not really met but interacted like cursorily in live journal like 20 years ago <laughs> <laughs> so but we ago. didn't know that at the time that was all that's that all just came out recently um so i was um watching a horror movie i don't remember even which horror movie um and I posted a comment on Hive that was like, somebody needs to um, to make an anthology that's called Why Didn't You Just Leave that covers um, all of these objections that people make when they review horror movies, like especially haunted house movies. Um, it was just kind of a glib throwaway comment on a social media site that would soon die. Um, but because Hive, I think, had this algorithm where it was like, you know it was like all writers there and so everybody was like seeing everybody's everybody's uh i don't even know what the high whatever they were called um and julia happened to see that and wow. julia was like uh i'll do this with you <laughs> or i'll do and i and i was like cool and she and then julia's like um would you want also want to do it and i was very scared but then i eventually <laughs> just said yolo um and it was just yeah and so then Hive collapsed like a week later, <laughs> but um, basically it was it existed long enough for us to to have this interaction and to meet, um, not on Hive, you know. And we started yeah. just like talking on on Zoom about it and made it a reality. Wow, that's that's really cool because I know I tried to set up an account with Hive, but every time I tried to log in, it would just crash, which is maybe yeah. why it doesn't exist. <laughs> Yeah, there was like some kind of data um, privacy issue. Something. Yeah, it's possible that someone has stolen all of Nadia's yeah. and my personal information yeah. and is using it for nefarious purposes, but at least we got this <laughs> anthology out of it. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Do you remember what movie you were watching that prompted the status? Oh, man. I could probably figure it out if I traced back my letterbox. I think it, it might have been... Um, <laughs> hilariously it might have been this movie called you should have left <laughs> <laughs> now that i think back to it i think it was that movie which was actually kind of an interesting movie like not totally successful but it was like okay like, you know, maybe it's, it's basically one of those like the house is actually a puzzle trap kind of you know movies mm -hmm. um, i think it was originally a book um and so i was just uh Maybe that was what, maybe that was how I came up with the title. <laughs> was, <laughs> was actually the title of the movie, but that would have been hilarious if true. Excellent. I it's such a good prompt for an anthology, I think, because it is something everyone screams at the TV, right? Like, why don't you just yeah. leave? What are some other examples that you two kind of came up with when devising not devising when coming up with the idea of this anthology like did you come up with um sample titles like well then that movie or that book why didn't they just leave i mean oh you... like things like things where we would have agonized over this yeah yeah um i mean i i feel like the most famous versions and julia please jump in with what you would think we didn't really talk about this specifically but i i feel like the most famous ones that i keep encountering when people talk about this subject is Conjuring House, Amityville House. Mm -hmm. um, and I, 
and it's I'm, I mean, frankly, it's interesting because if you look at sort of the fraught history of the families that lived in those houses and later publicized their stories from those houses, there's a lot of kind of back and forth, right, that people have explored afterwards, like, was this all fake? And this was all just kind of a publicity stunt. Um, so, you know, I mean, there could be a very obvious answer there to why they didn't just leave. Um, yeah, they want to make money. And fair enough, right? Like, and I, I do think that a lot of times, um, it does come down to money. I mean, when when a haunted house story has that sort of explanation, usually it's, well, we sunk all the money into the house. Mm -hmm. and now we can't we can't afford to to leave it um so yeah i think that's kind of the classic answer and probably the answer that's the most prevalent you know like when i when i post this on social media what people usually say is i can't afford any to you know it's like this is cheaper than you know yeah I, what's my alternative essentially yeah, and I think it's really interesting that you brought up the Amityville house, because if you look at the actual true history of that, it's the history of a family leaving. Like, they bought the house, and then they were like, we want to get out of this house, so they left the house, and then there was a lot about it being haunted, which is tied up in lawsuits of them trying, and, and them selling their story, of them trying to get the money back for having bought a house that they didn't want anymore, effectively. <laughs> That's interesting. Yeah, that yeah it makes sense though like what we what we know of it now is like the right. ideal horror movie but like, yes if yes. you look at the lutz family it's basically like they moved into the house and then they left the house and there is this horrible like gruesome murder history before they moved in which they then cited as like uh, reasons uh -huh. for them wanting to leave but it sort of seems like it's possible and i don't even know for sure but it's possible that the reason they left is actually more to do with not having the money to pay for the mortgage. That's right. <laughs> I have to respect like a decision making process like that. Like you move into a place, then you realize, oh, I can't afford this, and you feel stuck with it, and then you decide, okay, this place is haunted. <laughs> <laughs> and like, it's also possible they experienced things that they didn't like, but they did leave. Like the the history of the Amityville house is that family left it, and that's why we know about it. Yeah going into this podcast i was trying to think of some movies feel like the reason why they don't leave the house isn't like realistic or logical i couldn't come up with anything every every movie i thought of like they seem to have a pretty good reason why they didn't leave and i i felt like i was um like mandela della affecting myself because <laughs> before i thought about it i was positive i could think of a thousand examples of like well, if they could have just left the house, why didn't they just leave the house? But I can't. <laughs> Maybe I'm just like brain sludge at the moment, but I'm drawing blanks. Yeah, I think I think that like when people have the shout that at the television, they're thinking in very, very short terms. Like it's literally like in this hour, in this moment, why aren't you putting, you know, everything in a car and yeah. packing? And I think that realistically a lot of stories i mean it's it's just like if i don't know like you might leave it just it doesn't take an hour it takes like a week <laughs> it takes a month um so i do think that there's kind of it's it's that same sort of anxiety about like wanting the characters to have to make an immediate decision and immediate action and that all often doesn't happen and if you look at like real accounts of hauntings like people who have lived in haunted houses when they don't leave it's often kind of because it's a slow burn mm -hmm. like the haunting gets worse gradually it's not something where suddenly like one day it's fine the next day everything is like bleeding and on fire and then they're like well definitely need to go now <laughs> um it's it's like a very slow creeping build up so I, I think that this is also like really uh true even in situations where things aren't haunted like you can move into a place and something's broken and you gotta fix it and then suddenly you realize that like you've spent a ton of money fixing stuff and everything's broken and the house is gonna fall down but you still live there so you're just sort of scraping by with your black mold problem <laughs> 
Yeah, that's a super good point. I mean, it doesn't have to always be a honey. It could be anything. You 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 would think like from an outside perspective, well, you could have just left that. But it's not easy to even think about it that way when you will involve directly. No, I mean, it's the, it's, to be glib, it's the sunk cost fallacy too. Yeah, it's, yeah. You like know, I've already uh, put so much into this. Yeah. So how mm-hmm. can I leave it now? And and it's also the question of like, how do I know anywhere else is going to be better than this? Right, yeah. Have, um, have you given much thought, either of you, to how long you would last in a, in a haunted house? Oh, I think it depends on what kind of haunting it is. Yeah. Well, what comes to mind when I say haunted house? Like, what is the haunted house that you think of? Um. Yeah, I mean, if if I if it was like poltergeist activity, I think I would last longer, because I think I've experienced that sort of thing, which I can easily attribute to like you know the pipes or the pressure changing or whatever. Um like things just kind of like rattling around doors closing by themselves like that's poltergeist stuff I think is easier to kind of attribute to other things and even if I if I couldn't attribute it up to other things I would probably attribute it to what most people end up attributing poltergeist activity to which is like an emotionally unstable person who's manifesting all these things happening um so like that I could take I think if I was seeing specters that would be bad I I I don't I, I don't know how I would do with that um that would be very bad maybe like a day honestly <laughs> I, feel I, don't like, know. <laughs> I feel like it would depend a lot on like how scary they were because like if you happen to just see like a ghost floating in the hallway but it's not bothering you I might stick around longer but if it's like I wake up in the middle of the night and this menacing thing goes over my bed trying to strangle me I think I would leave <laughs> um <laughs> I also think that if you're talking like Amityville style stuff, if the walls are like dripping black sludge and there's bees or flies everywhere, I'm going to have a harder time staying. Yeah, I would just yeah. be like, well, we need to call the exterminator, I think. Right, that's- right. Like, I'd be like, okay, we got to like, like this, is a, this is a hazard. <laughs> exactly. I, um, I think I've talked about this on the podcast before, but it's okay. No one listens. I'm going to say it again. When I uh, moved to Texas, I moved into the studio apartment and I quickly had this insane uh, bee problem. Uh, bees just would come in through the ceiling fan and just hang out in my apartment all day. And I was doing a, n- a night job at the time. So I would come home at 8 a.m. and lay on my couch and just sleep as bees would just <laughs> to consume me i guess oh, no. uh, i quickly like just got used to them and i would get stung <laughs> and like i think i'm immune to bees now but you bringing up the uh the bees in that movie reminded me of that maybe i was living in a haunted apartment i don't know that's very disturbing yeah i would but, complain but now, and management. I, I like it. I like the idea that they made you immune. So it's actually kind of like a superhero origin story. Yeah. You know? And I think it's true because I hadn't gotten stung for a long time after that. But recently I was on the phone with someone outside and I looked like felt like a small like bit of pain on my neck. And I looked down and I, I, I had gotten stung on the neck, but I was fine. Nothing. I, I just had the initial like shocking surprise. But after that no pain i was i was cool so i don't know maybe this is like my evolution into becoming a candy man (laughs) (laughs) um but to um end my um bee story i would complain to management and they would do nothing because it was a terrible place so eventually i collected um like a hundred dead bees just in my apartment in this um tiny cup and I walked down oh, to management wow. and I just set the cup on the, the table and I said, please help me. <laughs> so they sent a maintenance man and he uh, took a big handle and he hit, a, hit a, a hole in the wall and like threw some bombs in it and said, OK, it's fixed. It wasn't fixed. But what that did was when it was time to move out, they blamed the hole on me and took my deposit. <laughs> oh, wow. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yep. That's something a lot of rental places don't take into uh, account with um, deposits is what happens if it's haunted? <laughs> Who gets the deposit back? I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. 
I'm pretty sure most rental companies already have taken that into account. And the answer is they get the deposit. They get to keep it. They always get to keep it. It's a pretty good yeah, that's, scheme. That's, that's probably why they have the deposit, right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> to account for potential hauntings that you may have manifested. It reminds me a little bit of the Michael J. Fox movie, um, The Frightened, where he has yeah, this whole scheme yeah. going on with the ghosts. And love, the... love that movie so much. It's pretty awesome. I rewatched it recently. I actually have not seen it for a long time. It's great. Mm, I haven't either. Okay, I'm glad that it holds up. Yeah, it. Um, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I just love a good scumbag protagonist, and that's what he plays in it, and it's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Um, you you mentioned, go, ahead. Sorry, go ahead. I was I was gonna say you mentioned scumbag protagonist, and I that made me think of your story to some extent, Max. Oh, oh thank you. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's what I was going to. I was gonna say let's talk about some of the stories already um, accepted into this anthology, because like with mine, it's called um, "Am I the Asshole for Setting My Dad's Trailer on File?" It's written as a Reddit post about someone who um well did what the title says. And she talks about how it happens and what the haunting was and so forth. But I'm excited. I know nothing about anything else in this anthology. I would love to find out some more reasons why you didn't leave. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, your story is great uh, <laughs> with the terrifying haunted chair, which is, I just, well, I'll never look at a recliner the same way again <laughs> uh, after reading that one. For some of the other ones that we have, like one super compelling reason not to leave is, I think, Susan Palumbo's story, which is about uh, an immigrant who takes a job caring for an old woman. And, uh, you know, because it's an immigrant situation, the job is tied to her visa. So if she leaves, she's going to have to leave the country. And of course, the reason she's working is to make money to send back home to her family uh, where there aren't the same job opportunities so there's a there's a real buy in there, which is money, but it's also like specifically tied to location, borders, documentation, et cetera. Um, and, and the situation is a very not great situation for her. Wow. How many um stories you already have like accepted from invites compared to what you are going to be looking for when you do the open call for submission? Um, we have asked 11 authors to give us stories mm -hmm. and um, we have most of those, but not all of them. So there's still a chance that one or two of those might not come through for us, but hopefully we'll get all of those. And then we're thinking probably about half of the book will also be open submissions. But it kind of depends, again, on whether or not all of our solicited authors deliver us stories or not. Right. Makes sense. What are some other ones you would like to talk about that you have already accepted? Yeah. So there's also, I would say, there's a strong theme of like family bond, um, which, you know, is part of your story as well, Max. Um, but uh, like um, Krista Carmen's uh, story, how come I got is to, to the moon, the and, moon back. and back yeah yeah I always forget like where does it end and yeah anyway um her story is very much about sort of the power of love even if it's also kind of toxic love um <laughs> mm -hmm. that basically it's a uh, a mother who has taken on a haunting for a child essentially and um and Krista always emphasizes that like the mother is like strangely gleeful in doing this because she takes she sees it as like an appropriate an appropriate uh, burden for a mother to take on. So it's kind of this like really kind of screwed up view of what parent obligations are. Yeah. Um, and then Joe Coach's story, uh, the head harvest. They're actually the protagonist is actually trying to get back in. <laughs> um, <laughs> Because of course Joe decided to <laughs> twist it that way. Um, so in that one, it's um, it's a college student who's trying to get back into the family home, and the, like the key doesn't work anymore. And when he looks inside, the house appears to have changed, and he's like, "What the hell is happening?" And um, 
and I think what what brings him back in is the sense that like he is already haunted on the inside and so there's no escaping the ghost that he's carrying around with him from his really kind of like screwed up childhood um so it's it's all about him trying to get back into the haunted house i love that i uh, i love joe's fiction so much that's really exciting that he's kind of did the opposite <laughs> yeah I, I yes exactly it's uh it's perfect i mean ha- however much like people like twisted the tropes um we like it's almost like we asked them to twist the tropes and then they like retwisted the twisted tropes you know what i mean (laughs) yeah so going into this anthology like did you have certain expectations of what type of stories you might get and if so like how will you surprise but what you've gotten so far besides joe's story which we've already mentioned um yeah i mean i think we weren't exactly sure what to expect but a lot of our authors has de- have delivered stories that were surprising to us in different ways um eden royce has given us a story that uh is about a sister who is trying to rescue her sister from a sort of haunted sleep and that ends up kind of like taking place in a haunted dream world so that was something that we didn't really expect i think it's a it's a different way of looking at it and uh what are some other ones i think tanya ransom has tanya been ransom has, that yeah, is that is unexpected for sure that, because that, that one was... takes place in a, in a haunted prison yep oh yeah. nice so it's an epistolary story uh between a prisoner and his girlfriend and he's in a haunted prison so on the face of it, why didn't you just leave us? Because, you know, I'm in jail. But like also... <laughs> I literally can't, yeah. yeah. But also like what's going on there and what are, how are how are people dealing with it and what are you seeing? It's, it's really... It's interesting. I think it's a fascinating and surprising story, personally. Yeah, I think that what I've been the most surprised by is just how far people can stretch the theme i think i was expecting stories that were much more sort of like bound by a very concrete reason um and i feel like we have received and it's and it's fabulous that we've received like stories that really sort of show the breadth of reasons why humans do irrational things um which is like my favorite genre like i love the whole like people are irrational and they will do crazy things um, because to them it's not crazy. Um, And there's, there's a lot of that going on. And I, for one, think that's, that's pretty great. Um, And it's also great to see how much our authors have written and taken from their personal, like their hearts, essentially their hearts and minds. Um, Because I do think that ultimately this question is a very personal one. Like it's, it's a different for everybody, you know, like that equation is different for everyone and being able to see sort of how people make that calculus um has been fascinating because you know you never know what's going on in somebody else's in somebody else's mind like I for one like I don't have a child so like Krista's you know story I'm like well I would never do that but (laughs) but then again like how would I I wouldn't have that experience you know so um yeah like things like that it's just been a great sort of example of like the the wild things that people do when they they feel they have to yeah like i think um talking about the family connections again alberto chimal has written us a story where it it's about a family uh that's a mother a father and two kids and their teenage daughter is murdered um and after that happens the father and the son both end up leaving and the mother refuses to leave the house because that's that's the place that's still connected to her murdered daughter oh wow Um, so and and it is definitely haunted and like everybody wants her to leave but she's not she's not leaving i am extremely excited to read all of these stories um when you sent out the original invites as well as i know uh, a press wasn't connected to it so i would love to know like what the evolution of that was did you always intend on getting a press to put it out or were you two going to self-publish it what happened with that yeah we were originally thinking we would just yeah. do it ourselves um, and then we started getting into the details of it and we were like you know 
it would be great to team up with a publisher and like have the the whole thing kind of be more of a team effort. So we started talking about it and talking about what our dream scenario would be and made a list of publishers that we'd like to work with. And uh, luckily for us, the very first publisher we asked if he would be interested in was Eric Raglan over at Cursed Morsels. We really like the other books that he's put out. We love that his focus is on sort of like horror with a social conscience. Um, and that's the kind of things that we were hoping to see. Uh, we were especially with this one, we're not hoping to see, you know, just the stories about haunted old castles and mansions. We were really looking for like lots of everyday people and how this affects real people's lives. And what are the complexities around reasons that you don't leave a haunted situation that are rooted not just in ghosts, but in our like real world struggles. So we thought that was a good fit for Cursed Morsels and luckily Eric agreed. So we're really happy to be working with him. And you also have someone illustrating every story, which I didn't know about until recently. I've seen the one done for my story and it's incredible. Who Who's doing those again? And what can you tell me about them? Okay, so it's definitely not every story. Right now, yeah, we, have not every story. Two, we have two illustrations right oh, now, and that's okay. all that we have. Strike that, um, strike that. <laughs> <laughs> we, have, we do have two illustrations that will be with stories, one for yours and one for Krista Carmen's. Yours is done by Yves Tyranny, who is a French-Canadian artist, and Krista's is done by Luke Spooner. They're both amazing. Uh, if our Kickstarter overfunds and we hit a stretch goal, we're going to have two more. So four of the stories will be illustrated. And we don't know which other two stories yet. So that's mm -hmm. still undecided. Um, but that's only if we actually overfund. So we haven't quite hit our funding goal yet. So we still have a little ways to go. Well, I definitely want to talk about the crowdfunding campaign, but before we do that, I must ask, just, be just because I'm really egotistic and I must know, how did you decide which serial you used to illustrate? That's really interesting. Um, we actually sat down and talked about it, and we were wondering, like, what are the most striking images we can imagine? Yeah. And uh, honestly, the reason why we chose your story is because that cherry is creepy as fuck. And we were yeah. like, yeah, we, we need to have that chair. Um, Krista's story also has, so I think Nadia mentioned that it's a mother who's sort of protecting her daughter from this haunting. And in the story, it's sort of the daughter realizing how much of this has been going on throughout her entire life. And she goes to her mother's house and she's like hearing weird things in the basement. And she's like, uh, what's going on down there? And her mother's like, don't go down there. Just leave it alone. There's nothing down there. And then finally she she says, no, I'm going to go look. And so they are both standing at the top of the staircase looking down with like a cell phone flashlight illuminating this dark haunted basement with blood dripping down the walls. And we were like, okay, that's the other one. That's yeah. the other thing that we need the image of. We wanted to make sure that we had like um, pictures of a house or like a, a resident, a domicile, like mm -hmm. a... <laughs> a place um and not just necessarily like a ghost for example um mm -hmm. but we were kind of really looking for like really sort of wow that's very sort of like explicitly described um just that it will be easy to send to an illustrator and to get that and and i mean honestly the fact that both of them came back and it was like oh yeah that's pretty much exactly what we were <laughs> <laughs> exactly is, is, you know it's an indication that we um we chose chose moments well so it was almost more like we were choosing like moments and pictures um mm -hmm. more than more than like you know oh this story needs it or that story needs it so yeah yeah i'll say the um the reclinal in mine is based on an actual reclinal and um the illustration looks identical to the the the, the, the actual one it was pretty <laughs> uncanny to see it i didn't like it <laughs> <laughs> I didn't like looking at it. Um, uh, it's how, a little creepy. What was the conversation like with the the front cover? Because that's pretty cool as well. I don't know anything about who even made it or what how it came to be. Nadia, do you want to talk about how? Yeah. So out? basically, so basically, we um we went with a British cover designer place um called like Cover Collection. Um, and basically what we did was we, we saw like the, the kind of like templates that they had available and we asked them to combine a couple 
in two because we we were like well we like this pattern because we were looking for something that wasn't um like the old gothic crumbling mansion and with something a little bit more so we really liked the whole like somebody in a window that could be an apartment building it could be a house it could be a lot of things um and we wanted to make sure that it felt somewhat kind of modern. Um, and so we just kind of combined, asked them to combine a couple and they were happy to do that. Um, so yeah, that's kind of how we came up with it. Um, we definitely, yeah, it, was, it was a lot of back and forth about like what vibe we want to capture <laughs> with this cover. I think Nadia and I spent a lot of time sort of like talking through and coming up with like mood boards with images yeah. and yeah. things like that. And this was still, we got the cover locked in before we actually decided to team up with a publisher. So this was still while we were thinking we we're going to do everything by ourselves. And um, so we went with a cover designer that we chose that uses stock images. So um, to, to the best of our knowledge, there's no AI involved in this. It's just, it's just stock art um, that is then used with graphic design. But we were really looking for, like, we, we talked a lot about colors, we talked a lot about mood, and we were really looking for something that, like Nadia said, felt both not too old fashioned, felt a bit more modern, and also was ambiguous as to what the ambiguous, location exactly. was. And ambiguous so, as to what was happening, because yeah. there were some that were like, you know, a killer with a, like a knife, <laughs> like kind of thing, like a, and it was yeah. like, okay, like, that's gonna, that, that's gonna, like, say a certain thing, right? So so we yeah, decided like, to keep I think it a little the, subtle in terms of what's happening here I think the original like one of the original ones that we asked them if they could kind of like combine this with had some of the look that we were looking for but like the figure was like an axe wielding murderer yeah. and we were like okay but that's not quite what we're going for we wanted to look ominous but not like an axe murderer <laughs> yeah I think, it's always I think fascinating. you nailed it it's great yeah <laughs> Yeah, it, you can't exactly tell what type of residence it is either, like you said, and I think that's pretty prolific for what you're doing. But this book is being crowdfunded right now, and we need some supreels. So please talk about the campaign, what what is involved in the campaign, and what people can get, and um, how long they have, and so forth. Let's uh, let's get this thing funded. Well, we're basically down to our last week. So this this campaign ends at the end of July. Um, so we're, we're at crunch time, but we are getting close. So that's exciting. Um, there are a lot of really cool things that you can get as rewards. Of course, you can get the book and the ebook. Uh, since we're working with Eric at Cursed Morsels, you can also get a bundle of all the Cursed Morsels titles, either in hardback, um, not hardback, paperback or in ebook format, um, that's called a bundle of cursed tomes. If you choose that, it also includes why didn't you just leave? So you are getting like all of the things that he's put out before, plus this one. Uh, we also, I designed some stickers. Um, I don't have drawing skills, but I can, I can put things together if other people have done the art. So I looked through some stock art and I made three different sticker designs. One is a little headstone that says, why didn't you just leave on it? Uh, one is a cute little ghost saying boo. And the third is a little bowl of cereal labeled the ghosty O's that has a little ghost rising out of the cereal. <laughs> so uh, those are those are available as rewards. Uh, we've also got art postcards of the two illustrated story art pieces. So you can get that creepy recliner and just stare at it every night before you go to sleep if you want to. I'm, I'm, I'm good. <laughs> you know, like, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not gonna do that. Um, there are, there's, Nadia, do you want to talk about some of the ones that are really exciting that we have? Yeah, about? yeah, so like, so we partnered with a really cool tarot reader and Regina, who is offering tarot readings. So that is one that's like, there's only two readings remaining. She's offering them at like a super deep discount. Um, so that's one like really fun one. Um, I personally love the tarot and we actually um, had a little like tarot interview with Regina um, on Monday um, along with Joe and Krista. And it was actually really fun. So I, I can attest that I think Regina would be an awesome reader for anyone who wants to get their fortune told. Um, we also have a couple other partnerships. 
Um, Manifest Your Own Digital Haunting is the one we are super, super excited about and really, really hope that um, folks back it. Um, that's with a paranormal investigator, Catherine Bergfeld, who's basically going to do a small, small team, small group Zoom um, and explain everything that goes into a paranormal investigation, maybe show us some EVPs, maybe give some consultation if anybody in the room has some hauntings that they would like to resolve. Um, and that is available either as its own reward tier or as an add-on. Um, the nice thing about that one is that we can, you know, it, it goes all over the world because it's um, it's a Zoom thing. Um, so we're really hoping that that one gets picked up because selfishly, we both are really excited about it yeah. and want to do it. <laughs> that sounds great. Um, we're also offering our own consultations. Um, both me and Julia are offering, like for me, it's like a story critique for Julia. It's like a chat about writing and publishing. So we're also happy to, you know, spend our own brain power on helping folks if they would like to back us at that level as well. So um, there's that. We also have Manifest Your Own Haunting, which is the most expensive, crazy <laughs> one. And that's where basically we will, whoever gets that will hang out with me and Julia in Salem, Massachusetts, it, at some haunted location. And we will get some ghost action going um, for everyone. So we're risking our eternal souls in that one. But <laughs> figured for the price that we're offering that reward here at it's about the cost of a soul so you know um there's that as well that itself that last one sounds like the like the plot of a of a movie it's the plot almost. of the next anthology yeah <laughs> no, why did you choose to come here why why are you thinking why, why did you back this kickstart <laughs> i would i would back that one <laughs> Well, that's really cool. Um, is there anything else you wanted to talk about with the campaign that we haven't already? Um, yeah, I think this is a great time to mention the really cool thing that we're doing for the very last week of the campaign, um, which we're revealing on Monday morning, which is tomorrow. So I think by the time this goes out, it should be coming. Yeah. Is um, Nadia and I are offering a flash reward that you can get either as its own reward level or as an add-on. So if you've already backed, you can add this on. And it's going to be uh, the what object is haunting you level. And that's where Nadia and I will personally write you a little paragraph about the object that is haunting specifically you. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. If you, um... if, if you would like to be haunted. And you would like to yeah, know you get what your own personalized you. uh, haunting. Yep, we'll we'll tell you. We'll It'll tell be, you what's um, haunting you. For the sake of the the podcast, would you two like to tell me what is haunting me? I mean, I think the easy answer is that chair. But oh, uh... God. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I yeah. kind of, to be honest, I destroyed that oh. fucking chill with a sledgehammer. Mill. It does not exist. You did? I did. Oh did you, wow! Did you burn it? Was... it? No, I just beat it until it was a bunch of tiny pieces so we could easily throw it away because I was having too many issues um, getting the trash truck to take it. Yeah. Ugh. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. So yeah, Nadia, do you want to do we? Well, wanna... I was going to say like something that would be, I feel like the, it would probably be a haunted book. I was going to say a book. Like, yeah. That is in your bookstore. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I think Wouldn't that... that be a pain in the ass? Because there's I, a lot of books that... in that shop. What is haunting you is a book. It looks very innocuous. You don't realize that it doesn't like it's not old. It looks like it's new, uh, but it's not a book that you ordered and it's just there in your shop. It's on the shelf. Um, every day, somebody, every day that you're working, somebody brings it up to the front and is like, how much is this? It doesn't have a price tag. And you're like, I don't know this book the first day. <laughs> But then the second day, you're like, I don't know this book. Except and so I then when you actually put a price on it, because you're like, okay, I'm just going to get rid of this book. You know, I'm just like, it's here, whatever. Even if someone accidentally brought it and like left it in the bookstore, I'm just going to sell it myself. And so you, you sell it, you know, and, but then like the next day it's there again. 
It's there, and, and you, like, know, you know what? it's the same book. It's the same book. It has the sticker on it. It's got the sticker on it. As time goes on, like, it keeps coming back, and there's more identifying mark. Like, one time you accidentally dropped it. It gets a crease on the corner. That crease is still there, and it's haunting you. And then, like, as you start going on and on, like, the, the things about it start to change. And so, like, maybe at first it's just called a ghoulish tale, and then it's like a ghoulish tale subtitle the haunting of max booth the <laughs> third i am spooked <laughs> i don't you're like i'm spooked by what this means about my inventory <laughs> yeah i'm gonna have to do some cataloging uh, it's gonna take a while um well the the campaign's active now it's one more week this is gonna go live monday um i'll have a link to the the campaign in the show notes um besides that should anyone listening know anything else um well our submissions period if you are a writer and you're interested is opening on august 1st there is a link to our submission guidelines right in the middle of the kickstarter so if you click through the kickstarter page it is right there and we are definitely interested in pulling a bunch of stories out of our open period we are looking forward to reading the stories that are important to you, that are about your experiences or things that you find interesting and worth exploring. Any types of settings that you haven't gotten already that you would love to see in the anthology? Good question. I don't think we have really apartment building settings yet. Yeah, I would love some more apartments, personally. As um, someone who lives, who lives in a, a group house, I'm not saying a group house, but like that kind of like the sort of situation that a young person <laughs> is is forced to, is forced to live in in the city um i think would be would be great yeah i mean i i think honestly though anything that is really something that you feel attached to personally for some reason like i love the one of the things that we love about yours max is it's so vivid in the details of you know, it's a double wide trailer, but it's clearly written from the perspective of someone who has seen this, who has lived this, who has been there. And that's what we're looking for is that real sense of this is a real experience that someone yeah. has had. All right. Well, folks, get your pens ready. How long will you going to be open for submissions? You might have said this already, but I forgot. For the month of August, we are Just looking month, at August. So, so the yep. whole month of August, we're open to submissions. We're going to be accepting our open submission stories in September, and we anticipate doing our edits in October. And release day, release month. Do you have one we're, in mind? Um, release so season. The, release season spring 2024 yes. <laughs> it's probably going to be sometime in uh, mid to late spring 2024 and i mean all of that depends a lot on how the publishing schedule goes because there's a lot of pieces that go into publishing like getting getting them printed but then also getting arcs out to reviewers and all of that other stuff and all of that stuff has to happen way in advance of the actual publication date all right well exciting stuff i I'm confident this will get funded. You, you will you have a week left, but you'll pretty much almost feel this is going to happen. Um, only because of this podcast. Yeah, <laughs> this podcast is going this to make This is it. Difference. This is it. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Podcast listeners, you've heard your mission. Make this happen. If you don't or make else... this happen, I'm never doing an Invil episode again. That might backfile, though. Ma so... Max will yeah. reconstruct the reclining chair. It'll take a sledgehammer and, to, and put it and back send together. It to every listener. And yeah, you'll just, it'll appear in your living room if you don't fund us. If, if this gets funded, I will go to your house and beat to death any piece of film that you'll, you want me to. <laughs> destroy. Oh my gosh, we should have that as a reward level. Wow, amazing. Destruction. They have to live in central Texas and I will do it. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Awesome. Well, that's about it. Um, did you want to, oh yeah. How can folks find you online? Any social media stuff you want to share, even if most social media outlets are it's dying? Broken. Yeah. I don't know what to even promote with social media now. Well, um, I, I mean, if you look for me on social media, I'm going to be either OMG Julia or ZOMG Julia. Um, but like Max said, what even is social media? My website is juliarios.com if you want to find me there. And I am Nadia Bolkin everywhere. Um, 
so Twitter, Instagram, Blue Sky, which I'm trying to make happen, but you know, we'll see. Um, and Facebook. So advantage of having a unique name is I don't have to experiment with my name. Before we end, you brought it up. I must a- must ask you, Blue Sky, is that? <sighs> I keep pronouncing it as blue ski and I don't, <laughs> I don't know what is correct. <laughs> um, I, I pronounce it blue sky, but I don't know. Who knows? I mean, it's, who knows? I don't know. I mean, when you log in, there's a, there's literally a blue sky. There. That can mean, that, that can mean anything. <laughs> <laughs> it, it could. It, yeah, that's true. It could also just be like blue sk. I mean, know? blue ski does rhyme with bluey. So it is spelled similarly. Hmm. I don't know. It's probably not going to last, huh? Nothing's going to last except well, this anthology. That's right. The anthology will last beyond the the apocalypses um, <laughs> that will consume us all. So go yeah. fund it. It'll be this and termites. And that was Julia Rios and Nadia Balkan talking about haunted houses. Why didn't you just leave is open for funding right now. This is the last week. Go to kickstartle.com, type in why didn't you just leave. I am positive you will find the campaign, throw in a few bucks, some fun rewards, and it's a good anthology. I mean, I say this having only read my Australian film, but it's a good anthology. You should support it, damn it. And go also to ghoulishbooks.com buy the latest issue of Ghoulish Tales. And if you will in the San Antonio area, come on down to Ghoulish Books, my bookshop. Say hello. Don't say you listen to the podcast. I will immediately be consumed. You have shown up to kill me. Peace, Max!